In today's video, I want to explain to you guys six month end procedures that every single business must do. Good day, my name is Andrew Gubier. I'm the owner of SA Accounting Network. I've been in the accounting industry since 2008. And today I just want to give you guys some practical things on your accounting package, whether it is on Sage or any other package, six things that every business must do on a monthly basis. If you don't do this stuff, then all your books are going to be wrong. So let me head down to my computer, then I can show you exactly what those things, the six things are. Right, first thing that you have to do when you're in Sage, for the purposes of my demonstration, I'm just working on the demo company of Sage, but the very first thing that you must do that is really, really critical for any bookkeeping system is you must do a bank reconciliation. Remember, your bank account is basically the background of your account, the backbone of your accounting system. So if your bank doesn't balance, it means that all your reports are going to be out. So I can't emphasize how important this is. Every month end, make double sure that your bank account balances. Let me quickly show you how to do it on Sage. So when you go on to Sage, you need to go to a report. Um, you'll see that if you go to banking and you go to reports, banking and you go to reports, there's a, a, a report over there that says bank and credit card transactions. So the easiest would be to, let's say for instance, now for January, we want to have a look and see with our bank balances. If you run this report, it will show you the transactions that happened inside that specific account. And then you can go confirm whether your bank account corresponds with what this report over here is showing. If your bank account doesn't balance, I've done a video on bank reconciliations. Go have a look at that and make sure that's the first thing is to make sure that that bank balance. Second thing that you need to do that's really, really important is your debtors. Because remember that debtors is linked to your cash flow. So if people aren't paying, if you're creating invoices and not getting the money in, then you might as well disclose your business. So let me quickly show you what you need to look at. So the second thing is your, your, your debtors. So if you had to go to Sage and you go to customers over there, you go to reports and you go to that one that says customer balances, days outstanding, and you run that report. Remember that we always look at month end. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this report for the 31st of January. So we can just get a picture of what our debtors look like at the end of January. So you can see over here on the demo company, they've got a long list of debtors. And you can see that amount over there shows 32 million rand. So the very first thing that you need to do when you start looking at your debtors list is you must look at this last column over here that says 120 days plus. And any money that is still outstanding, you need to ask yourself the question whether those amounts must be there. So either you must start chasing these people around to start getting the money in, or you must maybe just have a look and see whether you maybe created an invoice in, in error, because if that invoice is not supposed to be there, it means that you're going to have to pay tax on, on, on money that you never received or that you never earned. So just make double sure about what the amounts that showing on your debtors list of yet, that you don't have people on you that's not supposed to be there. So if there are maybe people inside that 120 day list that you know that you're not going to get the money in, remember that you need to start with the legal action over there, so get the contact the lawyer so they can start setting out those legal letters and stuff to try and get the debt in. Because as soon as you've got proof that you started chasing that money around, then you can start taking steps to write off bad debt. But that is a talk for a different day. Next thing that's really important when you start looking at your debtors is you need to look for, for, for minus balances on the, this list of VF. So this is quite a nice example. You can see that there's two ones, one from Alpha, Alpha Cycling Supplies. There's a minus 155,000 Rand showing there. So if you find that on your debtors list, you've got balances with negative amounts, what it means is that you've received a payment from a customer, but they never created the invoice. So you need to make double sure that, that, that you must create the invoices for your customers. Otherwise, that income is not going to reflect on the income statement. So it's really, really important that you must go do those, um, check for minus amounts, negative amounts on your debtors, so that you can get those amounts sorted out. And obviously the rest of your debtors, you need to chase these people so they can get the money into your bank account because there's no use the money since inside the account it's got to be in your account so you can end up using the money for your business purposes the next thing that you need to do so first thing we talked about the bank reconciliation second is your debtors review third one is your creditors review so you're going to follow the same process over there as well you're going to go to supplies this time you're going to go to reports supplies report and you're going to go to the one that says supply balances days outstanding once again you run it at the year end or the month end that you are looking at so for the purposes of our example, we're looking at the end of January, then you need to have a look and see what these balances show over here. So all these small things that I'm showing you guys is all stuff that's going to influence your reporting at the end of the year, end of the month. So same thing over here, you can see you've got a list of suppliers. These guys owe their suppliers 40 million rand. 
Once again, start with the 120 day plus column over there. See what amounts are outstanding. And if you do owe those suppliers those amounts, then come on guys, you've got to settle the debt because they're obviously waiting for your money as well. Make an arrangement, see how you can get those debts sorted out. But it's really, really important because remember, whatever appears on this list, 90% of the time, it influences your cost of sales line and income statement. So if your creditors are out, then your income statement is going to be out. So really important, go through these things. And what I always recommend um, to my clients is that um, if you've got people's names on this list over here, contact those suppliers, ask them for a statement, take the balance that you've got on the statement and compare it to what the amount is on this report over here. If it balances, then you know your creditors are right. If it doesn't balance, you need to go find out what's missing, whether they may be missing a payment on their side, whether you may be missing a supply invoice. So that is really, really important that you must have a look at that. So that is your creditors. And once again, another thing you must look at is for negative amounts. So if you've paid a supplier, but you haven't loaded the supply invoice on the system, then it means that you can have a negative amount on your suppliers and then your, your cost of sales is going to be out and your VAT reports. So that's really, really important. <clears throat> so that is in terms of your creditors. The first thing that's really important or the fourth thing is you have to do a stock take. If you deal with stock, remember that stock value that you've got at the end of the month influences your gross profit. Because remember, you start with your opening stock, purchases for the month, less your closing stock, and that is going to give you your, your cost of sales for the month. So you must go and look at your stock value. On Sage, if you work with a point of sale system, normally they integrate with each other. So if you go on to Sage, you can go to items over here, you go to reports, and then there's a report over there that says item valuation. So if you had to look at this report over here, it will give you a value of 8.9 million rand as the value of the stock that they've got on hand in this demo company over here. So the next thing what you would normally do is you would print out the stock sheet over here, go to your physical shop, go count all the stock that you've got, make sure that it corresponds. If there's stuff missing, then obviously you've got to do a couple of stock journals. If you've got more stock, then you must go check whether you actually loaded all your supply invoices. And once again, it comes back to my previous point where you have to do the supply reconciliation. So this is also a really, really important thing. So just to recap, first thing is your bank recon. Second thing is your debtors recon, third is your creditors, fourth one was your stock take. Now, once you've got those things sorted out, now I can start looking at your balance sheets. So what's really important over there is I want you to guys to run two balance sheets. So you run one balance sheet at the end of the previous period and you run one balance at the end of the period that you want to look at now. So in my example of here, I've got a balance sheet over here for December 2020 and then I've got a second balance sheet that I printed for this January 2022. So what's important, remember that by default, there's only a couple of balances that would change on your balance sheet. The first one is obviously your bank account because there's been movements inside there. Second one is your debtors because you obviously people might owe you more money or people might owe you less money. Your creditors will change as well. Depending on the suppliers that you work with, your stock value will change. And the third one or fifth one is the value added tax account. So those are the ones you expect to change. So what you need to do is you need to compare the balances from the end of the previous period to the balances of the current period. Because, let me quickly show you. So if I look at this balance sheet over here, I can see the value of my equipment and my motor vehicles is 768,000 Rand. If I look at the end of the current period that we want to look at now, I can see my balance is still the same. So what that tells me is that there's no wrong allocation that was done. Quite often we find that if people have vehicles financed, they will go load those car payments as an asset. But remember, for cash flow purposes, you want to show those car payments as an expense so you can see where the money is going to. Then at the end of the year, your accountant will go and make the journals where they split that car payment into two to say what was the capital portion that is going to come off your liability and what is the interest expense that will come off your income for the year. So for what we do for cash flow purposes, all the expenses that you incur, if it's car payments, if you're paying debt and all that type of stuff, easiest thing to do is just put it in the income statement so you can keep track of what's happening on a cash flow basis inside your business. Otherwise, you're just taking things, adding it to your balance sheet or deducting it at the end of the month, all your reports out because you won't know what happened with the money. So just that's my tip. So that is what you would normally look at. So if there's any movements inside your balance sheet, Go investigate, get those things allocated into the right account so that you can start running proper reports. Once you know that your balance sheets are fine, remember the balance sheet or the new name that they gave it is a statement of financial position and that is actually a better description of what the purpose of a, of a balance sheet is because it wants to show you what the position of your business is. So you can have a look and see what the position of the business was end of December 2021. Now I could take another picture again of your business at end of January 2022. Then you can compare those two balance sheets with these other to see whether there's been growth in your business, whether 
you've got more debt now or less debt than the previous month and that is the purpose why I run the balance sheet. Then the next report that we're going to look at is your profit and loss or what that will be or what that does and the new name for that is the statement of financial performance. So that actually tells you how the business performed over that period. So what your turnover was, what your cost of sales was, what your expenses was and what your profit was. So let me quickly show you that report. Yeah, and that is the final one. So if you run a profit and loss report, once again, you'll go to accountants area, go to reports, management reports, choose profit and loss. And once you get to this one over here, we normally prefer to use a yearly one. And then over here by analysis code, you'll see over here, you're going to choose, no, not that one. Um, um, here by this one over here, we must say that you want to have a look at this one on a monthly basis. So what that will do is it will pull an income statement for you on a monthly basis so you can see what happened inside your business from month to month. And the reason why you want to look at your income statement from month to month is you want to start looking for variations. So if there's anything that's fucked, then you must go investigate and see why it's fucked because then it might be that you maybe allocated something into the wrong account. Just to take an example, if let's say for instance your salaries account, you would expect your salaries to be exactly the same. In the same if you pay bonuses, it should spark and then January and February should return back to normal. So now if your salary is 10,000 rand every single month, all of a sudden you say next month it's 13,000 rand, then you know something is funny there. Go investigate over there. It might be that you've done an allocation wrong where you maybe bought stationery instead of choosing the stationary account, you choose the salaries and wages account, and now that expense is lying inside the wrong account. So that is what you're actually looking for when you're looking at the income statement. So the first thing is just to do an analytical review. So let's say for instance, like in this example of here, you can see we've got electricity for two months, then for three months there's no electricity, and the next month there's electricity. So it means that the chances are that you probably allocated the electricity expense into a wrong account somewhere. So that is the reason why I look at your income statement. This is to look at that analytical review to try and find variations to see stuff that's maybe in the wrong place. Then once you've got that, you can obviously go to your total column far on the right hand side to see what your turnover was so far for the year, what your purchases was, what your cost of sales was, any other income, all the expenses that you had, and that bottom line over there, whether you've made a profit or not. Um, if you guys found any value in this video, remember to please like the video, subscribe to my channel. And if you guys are looking for a new accountant for your business, remember to get in touch with us as well. You can check out our web website, saaccountingnetwork.co.za. We've got a list of many different accountants there that can assist you with all your accounting and bookkeeping needs. Thanks for watching.